Thank you for joining us. My name is Romeo. This is the P3 show for June 8th, this beautiful Saturday. There's a lot happening here in our beautiful city, Burlington, Vermont. And uh, our show today will be focused on uh, the city budget as well as the encampment and public safety of whom I've had the uh, our mayor to have joined us today in our, our in our show, but there's, uh, based on what I understand, there's been a scheduled mix up. That being said, the show must go on. And uh, looking at uh, the new administration and how uh, the administration and the city council, the new city council is dealing with the budget deficit. As we understood, uh, the prior administration uh, put about nearly $9 million deficit, if not about uh, $9 million, maybe plus. But the current administration uh, came up with an additional amount that wasn't accounted for, which brought the budget to uh, $13 million. And I think, I don't know if you can see at the bottom uh, where it says tentative total of $13 million, $800,028. Uh, $828,000. So looking at through the deficit, this is where the city is working on in terms of the budget resolution for FYI, or rather FY uh, 2025 uh, budget solution presented to the city council, which was this past May um, meeting, a city council meeting. So looking through the budget resolution on what the city has come up with in terms of how to uh, make up for the loss of funds or the loss that we are short on, I'm looking at the tax revenue increase uh, in fees, uh, a strategic uh, use of one-time funding, uh, budget savings from different uh, positions that are not being filled or cutting expenses, and so on and so forth, as well as increase in other revenue areas. And so um, looking at this uh, solution, I'm seeing two things that I think are concerning, which I would have loved to discuss that with our mayor. Maybe there will be another show that I will talk to her about this. But I think one of my concerns was that the city is looking at, uh, in terms of implementing voter approved the public safety 0.2% uh, uh, increase in taxes. I believe that was 0.3, but apparently the city is going for 0.2 um, in the amount of $1,350,000 uh, increase. So, um, because I don't want to get my numbers wrong or what I needed to say wrong, this, that's what I would have loved to have her to give more clarity to some of these numbers that are presented by the uh, her administration, uh, Emma Mulvaney, Stanek's administration, uh, to discuss more on what these numbers mean in terms of the rise of taxes uh, from hotels from 2% to 4%, uh, raise non-lodging gross, uh, gross rather, receipts from 2% to 2.5%, and the debt service tax uh, as, as well, as part of the total uh, tax revenue. Uh, being raised in the amount of five million eight hundred eight hundred thousand dollars. So, uh, beyond looking at the numbers, my thing is: is is this enough to really address the deficit? And what does that mean for the average taxpayers? Because some of the key concerns was property taxes being raised, uh, as well as the city may not be necessarily prioritizing public safety, even though. The, there's been a vote approved of a 0.3% in tax increase, uh, or based on what I'm seeing here, it's a 0.2% based on what the uh, administration has put forth in terms of uh, raising those funds to uh, work with um, helping the more PD recruitment, police department member recruitment, the uh, response uh, response time uh, from the um, fire department, RCT, I believe that's a response community program that the uh, fire department does in terms of responding to overdoses and rather than having an entire um, uh, engine response, they will have two people respond and who have all the gears and everything that they need. Um, so multiple things to be able to uh, help those funding. Now, another issue that I have, at least for me anyway, that may very well go to uh, 
fellow Burlingtonian is the city use of one-time funding for to resolve budget issues. Uh, because if you look at it, I see here the ARBA funds are still being used. Uh, it says here repurpose and used ARBA funding. Uh, for, and then there's the opiate settlement, which I believe that goes to um, the fire department's response to uh, opiate issues or overdoses or medical issues as well. Then the RIEIB, which is the racial equity and belonging assigned fund balance unused from physical year 2023. There's still some funding available where that will be used. So my concern is the city of a reliance of one time uh, fund use because there's a lot of patching that is being put and I would have loved that mayor to address it. Maybe that's the case. Maybe that's not the case. Uh, however, uh, the current solution looks good is it the best not necessarily but does that address some of the key concerns yes would, would, would we'd like to see much more better explanation on how this pertains to um the 13 million plus deficit this is almost uh 14 million dollars to be honest with you because it's just almost close to 14 million dollars if you look at the amount now, looking at the budget plan for the city, um, what I'm looking at here is the city is now focused on different ways of uh, addressing the budget shortfall, such as committing to affordability in our city in terms of the city's FYI 25, identifying sustainable financial practices based on how the city manage its funding and revenue gross receipts and so on. Also having the right work size uh, city government that is able to use the money for the right purposes, the right locations, allocate the funding where it needs to be. This way we're not short on additional uh, deficit for FY26. Also uh, being fair in raising new revenue uh, across the entire community because one concern has been the deficit in, um, or rather the concern uh, regarding the property taxes, uh, where folks feel like they're being overtaxed in terms of uh, raising revenues for the city to be able to operate and provide services to uh, folks uh, living here, fellow Bur Burlingtonians. Also, um, through the budget for FI25, reflecting the priorities of our city, community safety, maintaining city services, creating a good uh, process for the city employees, unions, and the public to engage in larger questions on how to uh, have the right size city government. I think that's incredibly important. And I, based on what I'm seeing here, that is the, the city's uh, principle, you know, budget principle as it were. And, I mean, this is all good and well, but my thing is, how does that translate in practice where the city can come in and say, okay, this is what we're doing. Um, and based on the information that they provided in the budget, this includes apparently um, all current staff. And I do see that uh, 7.5 attrition included in, in all department, except the, uh, the police department, as well as the fire department based on the, the historical data they're providing, as well as 22 current vac uh, vacant positions uh, has been included in the FY25 based on the budget that has been prepared so far. And I do see that increasing user fees. Apparently that is what is uh, being considered as part of dealing with the $13 million plus deficit uh, based on the, according to the study uh, being shown on the, under the budget assumption part of this. Also using, again, I've spoken the, uh, the remaining ARPA funds. I believe that's the federal funds that was uh, given uh, to the city during COVID. Don't, don't quote on me, but that might just be the case. <laughs> uh, but that being said, um, I think maybe in the future we'll uh, discuss with the mayor who knows it, but this is more or less a look at the overall general fund uh, budget uh, the city has provided, uh, what the actual uh, budget looks like for the city for FY25. That might have changed because this is the draft that I'm looking at right now that you're also looking at as well. Uh, FY25, you're looking at about $107 million in revenues and 100 and 
uh, yeah, $107 million, 0.8 million dollars rather. And uh, that's revenue and expenses uh, based on what I'm looking to compare to FY24 we're currently in. Uh, so a lot is going on. I feel like the city budget is going up, up and up in part because of cost of living has gone really up. And, um, you know, it's really strange because if you really go to the grocery store today, um, something that costed you, I don't know, $10 costs you now. 25 uh, $30, and being asked of people to, you know, be taxed more, I think it's really a difficult proposition, even though people voted uh, for the public safety uh, tax increase, and I think in part, again, I don't speak for everybody, but I think most people maybe have, may, may have voted as part of that just because of the word, um, you know, public safety. Again, we do need you know strong police force. We do need a strong public safety, strong uh, response to opioid crisis, and so on and so forth. Um, so, I think that might have in part contributed folks voting yes on this this specific uh, tax increases. And you can see the tax revenues uh, implement uh, voter approved police and fire tax increase of 02 percent. Raise non lodging gross uh, receipts uh, 2% to 2.5%. Raise the hotel tax to from 2% to 4%. The retirement uh, triggered automatically as well. And then the debt tax triggered automatically with a total increase of uh, $5.80 million. So a lot is happening. I'm not a numbers guy, but uh, based on what I'm looking at here, I think a lot is being asked of uh, fellow Burlingtonians. And I don't think that is necessarily good but then again um, there's a way uh, has the city, has, the city in other words has to come up a way to balance uh, these financial issues that we're facing so I'm not gonna go too much deep into the financial issues of our city I would have loved to have the mayor to kind of help me go through this process with me and answer some of these questions like I said earlier due to uh, a conflict of schedule, the mayor was unable to make it to today's show. Maybe she will be there for the next show and we'll discuss more about these. But uh, just looking back, a uh, quick look at the total summary of um, the, uh, the total $13.8 million in deficit uh, that we so totally have right now includes, of course, the uh, $5.8 million in tax revenues, increases uh, in fees at 1.2%. I believe this is how this will be covered, rather than it being that is what we're short on. Of course, we're short on $13.8 million, but this is what I'm looking at in summary, how this will be covered uh, in total, or where the funds will be coming from to cover $13 million. And don't get me wrong, nothing to take away from the uh, staff at City Hall. I think they're working their butts off to get things done, and I know it's not easy for them to come up with this money but at the end of the day one needs to needs to realize that there needs to be a a balanced plan between what folks can afford to give away versus what is our reality what are what are the spaces where we need to cut spending on and not keep having um because what what would happen in the next uh, couple of fy 26 27 you know are we going to be uh, short again additional several million dollars and where would that come from now that they're, they're you know, this, this is where we're doing the cuts and uh, increases in fees and so on and so forth. At any rate, um, that's where we're at on the budget. And hopefully uh, maybe the next show, the show after, uh, maybe we'll have uh, time to meet with the mayor and have much more in-depth discussion. Maybe it might not be this specific topic. Uh, maybe it might be different topics. Now I'll move on to uh, public safety and uh, encampment. Um, I don't know if you can see this image on your screen. Uh, we have encampment that is happening over the, the waterfront, which also, again, I would have loved to discuss with our mayor. I do understand that our city, um, it's not necessarily sponsoring, but at the same time is uh, uh, providing some services. Um, and there's been a lot of uh, concerns that has been raised. Is, you know, if this is a something that the city has, uh, how, do, how do you call it, sanctioned, uh, planned uh, that uh, that they're allowed uh, these encampments to happen and what is the position of the mayor in dealing with this encampment because 
as it continues to be so, it could very well become a safety issue where people may not be able to go for their run and people could very well get harassed running, uh, going for their walks and so on and so forth. So I would have loved to find out what the plans for the city is in terms of dealing with uh, people uh, setting up encampment on public lands. I get that folks don't have a place to stay and that is rather unfortunate. And um, we have a housing crunch here on top of the um, financial woes and uh, the cost of living rising and so on and so forth. Um, so my thing is, I mean, there are the pods available, which I think it's already full at this time from what I understand. Also the new, um, uh, the old Champlain Inn uh, is also, I think, fully uh, occupied at this time, I think from what I understand. So I don't know where some of these uh, folks are, if they're like, you know, folks that are from this city or folks that came from either Barrie or Middlebury or Brattleboro or St. Albans. And they're just lodging out here because there's some services available in Burlington and you have uh, the social security office that's nearby there. So I'm wondering what is drawing people to camp out. And it's, it's really becoming a very prevalent issues here in the city. I've also noticed that at 108 Cherry Street, uh, not Cherry, but rather Pearl Street, right by the old uh, State House building uh, where the DCF used to stay, Department of uh, Children and Family, there is an encampment that has been going on where it's just been cleared and uh, you know it's boarded up now. 10, uh, I believe 105 Cherry Street also, that's the other entrance to that same very building right by the health uh, office over there, which the state left that building. Folks used to encamp there, and I think uh, it's also that has been boarded up. And I think the state probably did that. I don't know if the city can do that. But in any event, that is some issues uh, that is ongoing in our city, which is contributing to some of the safety issues that we're having in our city. And I would have loved that to discuss that with the mayor. That being said, um, this, I'm going to keep this show rather short and sweet and straightforward, and then we'll go more when our in-depth to some of these issues in the next show and uh, bring hopefully our police chief as well as the fire chief and maybe give us more answer on what's going on when it comes to public safety issues and as far as encampment how pd's dealing with that and in terms of response and is this taking away much of their time or what are we doing so i thank you for joining me i'm sorry that this is a quick short video or show rather and hopefully uh, maybe in the, uh, the mayor will be here for the next show, the show after, and then we'll go more in-depth into some of the stuff that was raised today. So thank you so much. And if you have any questions, uh, let me know. And you have a beautiful day.